well, getting on the end of this quarterly. Uh, Acts chapter 12. Uh, I think the theme that they had for us today is a praying church and God's power. Uh, Going to notice some things today in our in the twelfth chapter of Acts that I hadn't thought about as I have studied this book in the past and listened to it in the years past. But uh, a lot to think about in that chapter. Not, of course, we're not going to get to all of it. I'm not going to get to probably near. Probably going to go through the whole thing, but not going to get much detail into very many verses. Uh, so, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter 12. And we'll just start one verse at a time and see how far we get through it this morning. Verses 1 and 2, a little bit more about the Herods. Y'all know we talked about them a little bit. I, th I don't know if it was Sunday school last week or from the mess sermon. I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, verse 1. Now about the, that time, Herod, that would be Herod Antipas, the king stretched forth his hands to vex or to inflict harm on certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Uh, Herod's... That's what we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But, you know, he killed James, but there's no detail about what happened to James. He just, took, he just killed James with a sword. And I'm sure he had a man kill James with a sword. I think with the sword is talking about how James was killed and Herod had it done. I don't think Herod killed anybody personally. Uh, maybe he did. I, I wouldn't want to argue too much on it. But uh, you, you remember James. He had a brother... His name was John. John wrote the book of Revelation. James is the first martyr of the apostles, of the twelve. James was the first one killed out of the bunch. You know who the last one who to die was? His brother, John. James was the first one. John was the last one. He died. He made. He probably died of old age. Uh, uh, but James was the, was the first of the twelve that was martyred. Now there was another martyr before this. Y'all remember who? Yeah, that's right. Stephen. They killed him. Remember he? They beheld him. He had the face of an angel, and he preached a wonderful message from Genesis from Genesis to the end of the book of of the Old Testament and they killed him. Remember that? Bashed his head and laid his... The, the men who did the killing laid their clothes down at the feet of the apostle, or excuse me, of Saul of Tarsus, the Pharisee of Pharisee. Remember that? He's the first one. But now this is the first one that, that Jesus had called to be an apostle. James. Herod killed him. Uh, and then we're going to notice Peter in jail again, verses 3 through 5. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, because Herod saw that the killing of James pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. Uh, the Passover and the feast, and this feast we're talking about here, we're back to back, same time. One, uh, so there was the same gathering, just uh, a little bit, uh, you know, just a, a day later than the Passover. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. Now, has Peter, has Peter not a stranger to that, right? Remember that doesn't happen to him once before? Uh... Acts 5, 17 through 25. We're not going to read it. And delivered him to four quintorians of soldiers to keep him. So Peter was arrested before, and you all know what happened. 
got out of there and went back to the Temple Mount and started preaching. That's where they found him, right? So here they arrest him, but this time he gets four, quintor four quintorians of soldiers. Now that's 16. I don't think he had 16 men around him all the time. I think it was just four fours. Well, I think there was two men. Peter was chained to two men. And then there were two men who guarded the door where Peter was. And then there was probably shifts. And it took 16 men to, 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 do, to take care of the shifts that, uh, that they had to, in place to take care and make sure Peter didn't go anywhere. You remember last time he went, they arrested him. They put him in the uh, in the common prison. I think they got him in the more state of the art prison with a whole lot more guards. This ain't gonna happen again. I'm sure the word got out about what happened to Peter the first time he was arrested. So this time they had him uh, delivered to four contorians of soldiers to keep him. Contorians mean sixteen. Intending after Easter or Passover to bring him to the people. Now, Easter is Easter is a modern invention of a certain holiday, pagan holiday. Actually, a Christian holiday. There were no Easter. There was no Easter in these days. Now, I've heard them say that Herod was a pagan. No, he wasn't. He, maybe he had some pagan ways. Sure, they did. Uh, but this is Passover. The word Passover was should, probably should be translated Passover there. Now, people, there's big argument about why there is a big, huge debate over this word right here, Easter or Passover, which should it be? I lean towards Passover. And if you know, if you, if you have a problem with it, look at it, look it up, look at it, study it, and think about it. Ask people about it. I can get pretty technical about it, but I don't want to this morning. But they say Easter, but the literal word is Pascha. And that's why, we, and in English, that word is Pascha is translated Passover. So, uh, what, did that, what does that tell you about the modern King James English Bible? Uh, who invented the Easter that we know of today? The same guys who translated the Bible into English in the 1500s, right? So get it? So I think Passover is better. Uh, so after Passover or Easter, to bring him forth to the people. Now what's that mean? They were going to cut, kill him just like they did James. They killed James. It's cool. People loved it. Herod liked to please the people, people pleaser. He said, you know, I want to get Peter. So after, after Passover, he was going to execute Peter. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So uh, were they not praying for James? Well, I don't think they had time. I think, I think, they, were, I think they were a praying church. I think they prayed and i think herod killed james whoa suddenly unexpectedly now they've got peter and they're going to kill peter and now this church is praying for peter they're praying unceasingly uh, and then i want to say i want to notice get up peter verses six through ten and when herod would have brought him forth that same of the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and, and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. Get up. Kick me. Smote him on the side. <laughs> said, get up. Get up, Peter. Get up now. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. In other words, I don't know what his sleeping attire was. Maybe he just was ungirded. Maybe he just didn't have his clothes bound to him. So, Gird up thyself and bind on thy sandals. 
And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went and followed him, and wished not. And wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he had seen a vision. I wonder how worried Peter was about all this. Huh? Think about it. I don't know how much it, you know, emphasis to put on it, but it, it, James got beheaded or killed with a sword. Don't know how they did that. He's arrested. He's in prison. He's next on the list. But what's what's he doing? Sleeping. <laughs> How much sleep would you get if you knew in the morning you was going to get sorted to death? You what? You think Peter was afraid? You got you got to just ask the question. Well, he was. You know, he'd been down. There, he, you know, I've been here before. I've been arrested in jail. I've been in jail. I've been imprisoned before, incarcerated before. Now I'm incarcerated to get what happened. God got him out of the prison the first time, and now. He's asleep, and an angel comes and gets him up. Get up, smokes him on the side. Get up, get up, Peter. Peter was sound asleep. Can y'all think of a another guy in the Bible who slept soundly through troublesome times? Jesus, remember that. Remember when Jesus was in that? You think Peter, Jesus was in that boat and that storm came, and all them disciples were horrified and scared? Remember that? But Jesus was what? Sleep. What they say, man? Go wake up. Can you think of another guy who was asleep during the crazy storm? Jonah. It's not fair that Terry's sitting here. The only person I can hear in her is her. She's answering all the questions. Yeah, Jonah. Jonah was asleep. Uh, didn't have a care in the world. So, so Peter was asleep. The angel come in and said, "Get up." And when they were past, verse 10, the first and second ward, they came into the iron gate that led into the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through on the street. And forthwith the angel departed from them. The Bible says that Peter didn't know if he was dreaming or, or what the deal was. You know, I was, I was in the physical therapists and they I don't know why but some one of them asked me you know one of the therapists asked me what how'd you how'd you do how'd you sleep last night what was, how'd it happen I was like well after I got through chasing Smeagol Spiegel or yeah Smeagol out in the yard who's Spiegel I said it's that guy on the Lord of the Rings that little green guy that runs around making that noise I said he was in my yard last night and I was out there trying to catch him Anyhow, it, it seems real to me. You know, you have those days where you don't know what's real and what's not. I was having a dream what I was having about that Spiegel. Uh, so Peter, you know, he's get, the angel wakes him up. Now he's walking through this prison. The chains just came off of him. Don't know how that happened. The doors opened of its own free will. There's guards everywhere. And he ain't sure if he's dreaming or what. Peter snaps out of it. Verse 11 and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surely that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. Now I know. Difference between Peter's ordeal and mine was there was no Spiegel. I was having a bad dream. Peter thought he was having a strange dream and now he realized, you know what? <laughs> God got me out of here. God got me out of the hand of Herod. Uh, Going to notice a couple more people in our, in our lesson this morning. Marcus and Rose, verse 12 through 16. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of of John, that would be John Mark, the guy who wrote the book of Mark. That would be this John. 
uh, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Many were gathered together praying for Peter. You know, James, is, they killed him, James. They assume they're going to kill. I don't know what they were praying. Lord, deliver Peter? No, I don't think so. The, the, I imagine the prayer is, Lord, help us. You know, Lord, what do we do? What's Lord give us? I don't know what they prayed. Uh, they were praying for Peter. I don't know if they. I don't know. I don't know if they was praying for his release, for a quick death, for a, I don't know what they were praying for. But they were praying for Peter. This whole house full of people at John Mark's house, whose mama's name was Mary. Uh, Peter knocked on the door of the gate. And a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda, which means Rose. That's Rhoda and Rose, same thing. Rose. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told Peter how, or, or, and told how Peter stood before the gate. Uh, it says that she did not open the door for gladness. Makes you wonder how old Rhoda was. How old Rose was. She knew Peter's voice. She knew it was Peter standing outside the door just by the sound of his voice. So no doubt, Peter, everybody knew who Peter was, even by his voice. But she heard his voice. They're praying for Peter, and now she now knock on the door, and Rose or Rhoda comes, and she hears his voice. And she didn't even open the door. She just ran back and told everybody. Uh... uh Verse 15, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. Rose, Rhoda, you're, you're crazy. You know, in my house growing up, you know what they'd have said. You're, you're, you're nutty in a fruitcake. <laughs> you've, lost, you've lost your mind, Rhoda. But she content, constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. Kind of shows their ignorance a little bit right there. Angels ain't bound by doors, right? They know that. So angel, so if it was Peter's angel, he wouldn't be bound by that door, would he? Uh, so they said it's his angel, verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Oh, my goodness gracious. Peter's on the chop block as far as they're concerned. They're praying for him. Praying about him. I'm sure they're praying for themselves. Praying about a lot of things. And then Peter shows up. There he is out there. And they were all astonished. You know what that astonished means? You ever, you ever, you ever scare somebody? I drove up on a, a deer one time. Just around the corner. Drove up on a deer. You know what that deer did? He run full blast into a barbed wire fence, bounced off of it like, a, like, like, it was, like it was a trampoline, run full blast across the street, run up a hill, did a flip, run, fell back down. That's, kind of, that's what that word astonished means. Oh my goodness. What in the world? They were astonished. Mind blown. Didn't know what to think. Didn't know what just happened. Like when I watched that deer run back, I'm just, just driving down the road. <laughs> and that deer run back and forth. That's, that's the way it was. Didn't know what to think about that. Uh... Uh, okay, y'all, listen. Verse 17. That's Arkansas language for what Peter said. But he, beckoning unto them with his hand to hold their peace, y'all, listen, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. I thought James was dead. Who's this James? The only, the only one James that I can think of would be James, the brother of Jesus Christ. James and Jude. You know the James that wrote the book of James? I think that's the James. Go tell James. And, and then, he, brethren... <laughs> And to the brethren, and he departed and went to another place. Now, I don't know if, if Peter had to go somewhere and think about what happened to him. Maybe he was 
Maybe he had a lot on his mind. Maybe he didn't feel like talking. Maybe he didn't feel like visiting. Maybe he was just needed to contemplate what happened. Uh, don't know where he went, but he went somewhere. He left that crowd that was praying for him. That's me. I'm here. I showed up. This is how it happened. Now you go tell James and the other brethren. And the Bible says he went somewhere else. I don't know where he went. Uh, now we want to get to Herod's being Herod's. Verses 18 and 19. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesar, Rhea, and their abode. You got some men right here that's going to die. Because of what God did with Peter, these men, I don't know if it's the four men or the whole, the whole bunch, the all sixty, I don't know. But they were examined and the Herod commanded that they be put to death. Now, now they're putting these men, don't these men seem kind of innocent to you? I, I think about that sometimes when I'm studying this lesson. These old, these old boys are just doing their job. Minding their own, but they're keeping this guy in prison like they do. They didn't do anything wrong. They were probably good guards. An angel came and unhooked Peter from them. And, and, and the, the gate opened. They didn't have anything. To, how could they stop something like that? Well, then Herod's being Herod had these guys killed. Man, I'm telling you, we live in a world today. I don't want to get too much into it. Christian world. And let's just say religious world. That's the problem with religious world today. All religions. They want to kill their way into the kingdom of heaven. Kill their way out of troubles. Blame everybody else for their misery. That's religion for you. That's Christianity. That's Buddhism. That's all. That's all religion. It's all that way. Kill, kill. Blame somebody else. Kill these soldiers for something God did. Guys, we're innocent. Well, well, you know, there's nobody innocent. Uh, but they didn't do anything. It wasn't their fault. What was they going? What would happen if I woke up? Huh? What were they going to do against an angel? Uh, so Herod's being Herod's. I tell you about them guys last week, just a little bit. Herod the Great, great king, good king. Man was hard on people, evil towards human beings, ruthless. Uh, vicious. So here we have a son, no different, right? You can't kill your way out of problems. You can't have you. You can, you just can't do it. As far as these religions goes, Herod, what are you doing? I feel for them guys. I mean, I'm like uh, I've got a, I've got some I got I got friends who've been in pr prisons, who prison guards. I've known prison guards. They, have, they, they work hard. They do their job, you know. They, they care about their work. And then here, kill them. Just have them examined and kill them. I don't think these were Romans, by the way. Roman soldiers. I don't think, Jew, I don't think Herod had any pull over a Roman soldier. Uh, he was a Jew, king of Jews. So this was some sort of Jewish guard. Uh, but he had these men killed. Politics as usual, verse 20 through 22. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, that would be royal bedroom keeper. These dudes, these dudes, these, his chamberlain had a lot of pull with Herod, the politician himself. His job was to keep Herod's life comfortable, safe. Uh, these people of Tyre made this man their friend. How politics. What's politics today? It's, it's not about doing what's right or wrong, is it? It's about who you know. Hmm? Who do you hang with? Who's your man? Who's your guy? That's politics today. I don't get into politics too much. Desired peace because their country was nursed by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, 
arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration or a speech to them. This is the same guy who just had them keepers killed because Peter was gone, right? Same king. And the people gave a shout saying, It is the voice of a God and not of man. Do we live in a world where people say to certain politicians things they really want to hear to get something from them? They don't mean it. They just need something from them. Politicians are flattered all the time. And I wonder if politicians know what that flattery is. Are they really, does a politician really think he's worthy and good? Does he, does, do politicians today not realize that people flatter them and get things from them and say good things about them because they want something from him? That's what happened here. It is the voice of a God. Herod out there speaking. Herod's death, verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. I wonder what angel that was. We think it might have been the one that cut Peter loose from him jail cell. Could have been, right? These, these men said, Behold, it's the voice of a God. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the glory, gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. By the way, every bit of that's in secular history. And that is a thing, being eaten by worms. And when we read that in the old, old the English Bible, and we're like, well, what is that? Well, there was a thing where, and it can still happen today. Your body can release a certain pathogen from certain places that can eat you. You can still die the same thing today. But the angel of the Lord smote him with these worms, and he gave up the ghost. Why did this happen? Because he gave not. Why did. I used to, I used to think, like, well, you know, what, he's get, what's he get? He just killed all these these men for no reason, just because they couldn't keep a, a man who was unkeepable. It's like they can give God the glory for getting Peter released. Let's kill these guys. It's their fault. What's their fault? They they can't hang with God. It's their fault. They can't put up a fight against God or the angel of, God, of the Lord. It's their, it, that's their fault. And look here. Herod, give your speech. It's funny. And I, I say funny. I, I use that word a lot because that's how I talked when I was a kid. But it's something that we should think about. That how, the, how the book of Acts, this chapter, this thir 13th chapter of Acts, it didn't get left out what happened to Herod. Isn't that fitting? I'm glad to know that God took care of Herod because of what he did to those 16 men. Because of what he did to James. He just killed, You know, he just politicized Christianity. Then he killed some men, blaming them for Peter's leaving. And now look what happens to him. I've heard, them, I've heard, I heard a preacher say one time, and I, I, start, I agree with him. It's not the case every time. But in God's work, in God's work and in His will and in His way, People die how they live. And, you, and I see it with this right here. This man died brutally, awfully. They say that dying of that, that particular disease that killed him in a week is terrible, painful, excruciating. I think we, what goes around comes around. If you're in a high, you know, if you're in a high position in life, and you're ordering people around and commanding people around and, and, you, and you mistreat them, blame them for all your problems, and you cause havoc and heartache in other people's life, mm, don't expect an easy, easy death. That's for free. I didn't mean to get on that. And now we're going to be back to Barnabas, Saul, and Mark. Verse 24. But the word of the Lord grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and they took with them John, whose surname is Mark. So now, Mary had a son named John. His name was Mark. They were praying in her house. And out of that house, we find 
one of the one of the great holy men of the of of old times, Mark. Uh, so you have Barnabas, Paul, and Mark. Uh, there's going to be more said about that later. I'm not going to get into it. But I want to point this out. In Acts, you don't have to turn there, but Acts 15, 7. You don't hear anything more about Peter. You know Peter just left. He told them, you go tell James and the brethren. And the Bible says he departed. Don't know anything about it. He don't show up in the book of Acts until Acts chapter 15, verse 7. Uh, and then after that, you won't find his name anymore in there. Uh, now it's time for the Gentile adventures of Paul and Barnabas and Mark. Uh, we're going to get to that next quarterly, I hope. I think it's 15 to 28. But I'm, I'm glad we did, got through 25 verses this morning a little bit quicker than normal. I'm glad you're here this morning. Does anybody have any comments or questions or corrections before we stand? And dismiss. A lot to think about, isn't it? You know, I'm I've been a preacher for so long that I spend most of my time thinking about theological things. Uh, fortunately, I in my life uh, I'm I'm allowed to study the Word. The time to do that. This time in my life, I have. Uh, I don't have I don't have much going on in my life that keeps me from studying and think about thinking about the word of God. Been disabled from the brain trauma. Uh but I mean, I've got some heart troubles that keep me probably out of the yard a whole lot more than I wanted to. And out, out keep me in the house. So I have a lot of time. I don't know how much I I don't even I don't remember a time of being at, just sitting in the pews listening to teachers and sitting in the pews listening to preachers and not being a preacher. I don't remember that. But I think we've got we've looked at enough here that maybe a guy can just go back and read slowly through that chapter and think about some things. Don't necessarily come up with a lot of conclusions, but think about and ponder on the Word of God. So y'all have any comments or questions? Corrections. Let's all stand.